Hello, hello, we're live. How are you? Happy almost 4th of July, Monday evening, July 3rd. If you're coming across this anywhere on social media, this is streaming in multiple places. My name is Linda Downey, and who I am is a spiritual transformation coach. I work with women, helping them get out of stress, overwhelm, and burnout, overcoming past traumas, reconnecting to self. So that's who I am. And you might find this in, as I said, multiple places. If you are watching or you catch the replay later, please say hello. I would love to meet you and say hello back and maybe where you're from. And if I don't see your comment, I will go back and look in all the places and make sure that I get back to you. So it's so nice to connect with you today. And um, tonight's conversation, or it's almost evening for me here in New Jersey, the conversation is about depression. I was actually in uh, one of the groups that I run and some people started talking about and wanted to chat going around depression. And it just reminded me of, you know, how much that's a part of everyone's journey at some point, oftentimes anyway, and how oftentimes we really struggle. So the perspective I want to share with you today may be different than anything you've heard before. And let me back up a little again about my background. So I said who I am and what I do, but I have a functional health background. I was a functional health practitioner, worked with women with chronic health issues like fatigue and gut and brain fog and all of that. And I've moved sort of away from that into more of this stress, overwhelm, stuck emotions, past trauma space, because that is really what causes the health issues. So in my um, journey professionally and in my own journey in my life, this is a key part that I think a lot of people don't realize or haven't really heard about. So this is the perspective that I want to share with you. If you're someone who's had depression, if you find yourself sort of always operating at a low level of depression, you know, it's kind of always there in the background, or you're going to see a, a doctor, maybe you have prescriptions, maybe you're always trying to change, that didn't work, let me try this, whatever. I want you to think about what's in the background of all of that. So what I'm going to share with you is from some training and coursework that I've done with Dr. Gabor Mate, who I reference a lot because I think he's phenomenal. If you've never heard of him, Dr. Mate, M-A-T-E, you can find him on YouTube and Instagram and all over the place. He's just a wonderful, kind expert with multiple um books that he's written. He's really considered an expert in the field of trauma and addiction. Um, and he often talks about depression. So this first part that I want to share with you is really from his training that I've taken. And he talks about, you know, think of when you depress something, when you depress something, like you hold it down, right? That's what we do when we depress. We take our finger and we hold something down. We don't allow it to rise up. And so depression really is the result of having held down your true authentic self. I know that you can find blood work that will say you have chemicals that are out, that are out of balance. And I know that um, maybe medications are what you've done in the past. And I'm not saying to stop those, but I'm just saying to look at what caused that out of balance in the brain and that, that nervous system response. So when you think of being held down, and when I say holding down your authentic self, I want you to go back in your life, go back in your mind as far back as you can, even when you were a, a kid in grade school, first grade, second grade, fifth grade, whatever it is, go back in your mind and think about how life was, maybe when you were out at school and in the world, maybe when you were home in your household, how life was for you and how did you decide that you needed to cope, to show up in order to be recognized, in order to be acknowledged, in order to receive love, maybe in your house or maybe from your friends? What were the things that you decided you needed to do? What did you start to do to show up in a way that would get you a response back, okay? So sometimes people 
work really hard at trying to be the best at something, being like the number one in classes or or doing everything, not only a great student, but also a great athlete and also on the debate team and all the things. Or maybe you decided what you needed to do was be really, really funny. And if you could just be really funny, then the other kids would like you. Or maybe in your house, what you saw would make a difference was if you made everything easier for everybody else. Maybe there was a lot of stress between your parents. Maybe it was a single family household and your mom needed help. Maybe there was anger issues, whatever it was. But you saw that if you could show up in a certain way, that it would make things a little bit easier. Maybe you wouldn't get yelled at. Maybe you'd feel like people liked you more. So you started to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? But over time, if you look at depression holding something down so it's not allowed to rise up, right? Keeping it pressed down. And you think about your true authentic self, like who you really are. If that gets pressed down and not allowed to express itself because you saw this way of being and coping worked, over time it becomes a huge burden. And so the work that I do with people has a huge component to it of spirituality, reconnecting to our spiritual self. Because what happens is when we take on behaviors like that and we start to see that there's a way I need to be that's not in alignment with myself, but if I be this way, life is going to be easier somehow, or I'm going to get some outcomes that I want somehow, so I'm not going to be my true self, right? That's a disconnect from your spiritual expression. You're doing your your people life, your human life, but your spirit is not being expressed. So the work that I do has a lot of components to it um, around connecting spiritually and also energetically. What's happening energetically in your body? So looking at those chemicals, the brain chemicals and how they get out of balance and requiring a medication to try to balance them. How does that happen? So energetically, if this is a new conversation to you, again, whether spiritual and energy may be very new, right? So just let me give you a little bit of a background. Everything that we are, even though we look like a solid mass of, you know, human being, what we really are is energy. In order to have this human body be alive and to keep breathing every day and to um, have your your physical experience requires energy to move through your body. Now, all parts of your body, all of the organs of your body, all of the systems of your body, each require their own energetic frequency. They each require a certain energy, a frequency, which means the speed that the energy moves through. They all require what's particular to them. When we are not expressing our true self, when we are holding, when we are depressing who we authentically are, we change that energetic frequency. There's an energetic change in our actual tissues of our body. Okay? So when you're taking things like medications or going to therapy or trying to do all of those things to help alleviate the depression, those are two places that if you're not aware of and you're not doing that kind of work, the, the, the depression is going to keep coming back. You're not going to get where you want to go because the energy frequency is not being moved out and restored to what would be normal for the tissues of your body the energetic frequency of how your body wants to function. It's actually like, um, like a third circulatory system, right? So we have blood. That's a circulatory system, the way our blood moves. We have our lymph, which is another system to move toxins out. And we have our energetic system, circulatory system. You can't see it the way you can see blood and lymph, but it's there. 
It's totally there. So if you're not moving the energy that got stuck there and held when you didn't speak up because it was safer to keep your mouth shut or when you stopped really pursuing the things you loved because you got the message that you should be pursuing something else or when you married someone or you were in a relationship, even though there were a lot of red flags saying, mm, this really isn't the right one, this isn't the right thing, but you did it anyway, either because people thought it was the right thing, it was a great catch, or you were afraid if you didn't do that, you'd stay alone, or um, you, you went so far before you actually realized it, you just didn't see how you could back out now, right? Or you've been in a marriage, and it hasn't been what you wanted it to be. You haven't been allowed to be ex to express yourself. You haven't been heard. And that's been going on for 30 years, right? All of that is depressing down who you really are. And your physical body has no choice. It has no choice but to take on the symptoms of that depression. When you hold down your spirit, when you block the expression of yourself, expression rather than depression, right? When you block your true expression and when you change the energy that's moving through your body and not allowing your tissues to be in the energetic frequency that works for them, your physical body has no choice but to get depressed. So that is a perspective from Dr. Gabor Mate. That was the first thing that I wanted to point out when you think of the word depression, think about holding down under your thumb who you really are, what your spirit and your soul is here to share with the world, what you would speak up if you felt like you could, what you would say, what you've been holding in your body since you were very little. Maybe it happened later in life, but for a lot of us, it happens when we're pretty young. And so it's a long time in there and the physical body just can't do it anymore. Your physical body is an expression of your spirit and your energy. It's an expression of that. Your physical body, how your body feels, what your physical circumstances are in your life is the expression of your spirit, how connected you are to your spirit and how well your energy is moving, how the energy frequency that you live your life on, what's the frequency that your soul is experiencing, that's all what your physical body is telling you. So when that's happening, your physical body has no choice. It, it doesn't matter what medication you take. That's just gonna help with the symptoms for however many hours it helps with the symptoms until you need another pill. OK, you're not going to change anything in your physical body. The second thing then that I wanted to point out, keeping all of that in mind is, again, think of the word depressed, depressed. And what really needs to happen as part of shifting that energy and part of returning to your true spiritual connection is this is going to be a play on words, deep rest deep rest, and I didn't make that up, I heard that somewhere too, okay? But in, depressed means I need deep rest from the inauthenticity that I've been carrying and trying to put out into the world. Like the, I'm not saying it like you're a bad person, that's not the point, okay? I'm saying the inauthenticity of my true self that I've decided was the only way I could survive in this world, the only way that I could feel safe, the only way that I could feel acknowledged, the only way that I could get love, whatever it was, whatever I had to do inauthentically to me has now so exhausted me. I need deep rest. I need to put that burden down. That's what depression is telling you. I need deep rest from the burden of holding that inauthenticity. I need deep rest from the incorrect energetic frequencies, the frequencies of shame, of guilt, of unworthiness, of not feeling lovable. Those, the, each one of those emotions has its own frequency. 
And when you're holding shame, I'm not good enough. Uh, that person left me because there must have been something wrong with me. Um, my mother had these issues and it must have been something about me, which we decide when we're very little. So shame, guilt, sadness, grief. When we keep those frequencies of those different emotional energies in our body, it's exhausting. Your body can only do it for so long. So deep rest, that's what depressed can tell us. So that's a perspective. Again, I would love if you say hello and where you're listening from, and I will go back and check all of the comments, is that something new that you've never heard before and if it is how does it resonate with you like if you actually stop and think about it is there a place where you go yeah actually that feels right that is how i've had to be in my life that is what my childhood was like or that is how my marriage has been for way too many years or i never loved what i was doing for a job in the world and I just did it because I figured I needed the money or whatever it is, whatever it is, just look to see because that is what's in the background of your physical body and the chemicals that are going through your biochemistry biochemi of your endocrine system. Your endocrine system is the physical expression of your emotions. You have an emotion, boom, hormones are created and released in response to that emotion. So any emotion where you're angry, upset, afraid, excited, anything like that, cortisol, just to put it in a nutshell, cortisol. There's some other ones too, but cortisol, adrenaline, right? Cortisol is a hormone. So whatever your emotion is, boom, there's a biochemical physical representation of that emotion when you're feeling love and you're bonding like you just are, you're in a new relationship and you're all feeling in love that's oxytocin when you give birth to a baby in order to bond with that baby oxytocin so you have these emotions and the hormones get produced so your endocrine system is the physical expression of your emotions those that physical expression those hormones that biochemistry is responding to whether you've held yourself down depressed your true authentic self or whether you've been lit up allowed to be who you are were able to speak what was true for you got to make the choices in your life that really lit you up didn't feel the pressure to be perfect, didn't feel like you had to work in order to receive love, you weren't worried about feeling safe in your household, maybe safe physically or maybe just safe emotionally. If you felt a certain way and someone said, what's wrong with you? Why would you feel that way? Okay, so those are the two. If you join me late, um, this conversation was about depression and about a different perspective than what's the medicine I need to take, what's the therapy that I need, but actually looking at the energetic and the spiritual component to that. So I wanted to give you a sense of that because that's the work that I do with the clients that I work with and um, in my own life as well. So if any of that is resonating with you, I'm going to... Um, pop into the comments. Let me see if I could do that right now. I want to pop into the comments um, a workshop that I'm going to be holding this week. It's a free workshop. You can just come, but we're going to go deeper than just a, like a 20 minute conversation. We're going to go a little bit deeper. Oh, thank you for responding. Uh, this person says, I have never heard depression described this way and it makes perfect sense. I've done this all of my work life. I don't know how to get that deep rest. Yeah, well, so what we do, and it doesn't say your name, I apologize, but what we do is um, we look at what we need to do to make different choices and to allow ourselves to go in different directions than what we've allowed before so that we can 
put that burden down and rest into the truth of who we are. That's what we do. So I should have gotten the link before I started, but I, it didn't occur to me. So I'm going to pop the link in the comments for the workshop. It's a free workshop. As long as you're registered, you'll get the recording. So even if you can't come live, register. So you'll get the recording. And I'm going to go a lot deeper into health, whether it's things like depression or chronic health issues like autoimmune conditions and how they're linked to past traumas in your life or stress that you're holding now and your spirituality. So it's a lot of what this conversation is about, but we'll go deeper into it. And I'm going to give you some tools that you can use to take away from that workshop, some ways to really dig into your own life and some tools to start to shift that. So um, let me put that in the, in the comments. And yeah, if there's anything else, please leave me any questions. But um, I'm glad that you were able to pop in and listen either now or later in the replay. And again, this is not like I made this up. Dr. Gabor Mate, who's a leading expert in trauma and addiction. He's a physician, um, written several books. Uh, the, body, the Body Doesn't Say. Now, all of a sudden, it just went out of my head because there's another book by uh, Bessel van der Kirk, The Body Keeps the Score, but that's his book. Um, anyway, Dr. Gabor Mate, if you've never heard of him, you may want to Google him or look him up or read some of his books. But um, I've taken several classes with him and along with my other training and my spiritual training. He talks really about the trauma part. And then what I really saw was that the spirituality and the connection to your spiritual, the beingness of your spirit, spiritual self needs to be nurtured and uncovered and restored back to wholeness to really return to wholeness so that you're not depressed okay i'll look for your questions thank you for listening have a wonderful fourth of july tomorrow if you're doing anything fun and the workshop is it is after fourth of july it's wednesday thursday and friday three parts and again, if you can't come live to any of them, you'll get the recording. So I hope to see you there and just look in the comments for the link. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great, have a great evening.